Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric. So behind me is a 2021 GMC Sierra. And in this video, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going over how to install this upper bumper piece that goes around the headlights, fog lights, under the front grille, and then over to the other side. So in a previous video, which I will link above, I have done a video on how to install the lower steel bumper. In this video, we're gonna go over how to install this upper bumper it can be pretty tricky but uh, I'm just gonna go over how I like to get these things done and hopefully you guys can find some value in it so hope you guys enjoy this video okay perfect I'm ready to get going got my slip solution here just gonna spray the uh, upper bumper down Perfect. Now I'm going to get my bumper piece off the weeding board. Okay, squeegee, dry spot right there. Back roll this into place. Okay, just gonna kind of get that to sit right there, just like so. Okay, get the film back, get the adhesive sprayed down with my slip solution. Perfect. Now, remove the excess film. I can just find the line. Where is it here? Okay, there we go. So, with these upper bumpers, same thing as I always preach on every other bumper install, you wanna install them starting in the middle and then working outwards so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and what I've found with these upper bumpers, you want to try and line up the film with this bottom edge over here just so you have consistent alignment. And what I'm going to do is get this corner down right here. Just gonna line that up like so. So when I'm doing my initial squeegeeing, I squeegee it really, really lightly, and then I push down with force. Like right now I'm using considerable force, so I know that that's in place. And I'm gonna come over here. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing right over here. Tack solution, spray that area down. Line that up. And that is perfectly aligned. Okay, that ain't going anywhere. Now, what I can do is focus on the middle over here. And I want to just 
just like that. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is come along over here and I'm just gonna, the big focus here is I wanna make this bottom edge look good because this is what people are gonna look at when they actually do look for the PPF. So I'm gonna go along and I'm just gonna make sure that this bottom edge is down. Normally, I like to squeegee all the moisture down, you know, in the same way that, you know, water doesn't flow uphill. But by getting this edge down, everything is going to line up up top here. And unfortunately, yes, this is just the way I do it. Like, you don't have to do it this way if you think you can do it better, by all means, and just do it better. Um, I got to push, I got to make sure that I'm pushing all the moisture up and out. So I'm gonna have to be really, really careful with my squeegee strokes to make sure that they're consistent and overlapping and that I'm not leaving tons of moisture behind. So, there we go. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, just with my hand, try and get as much air out of here as possible. Get some tack solution underneath there. And I'm gonna work this line upwards. By going back and forth, I'm overlapping those squeegee strokes to make sure that no moisture is staying behind. And I'm using considerable pressure as well. I'll come back over here later and get that. There we go. And by getting this bottom edge lined up perfectly, this top edge lines up perfectly. So that uh, there's a there's a method to my madness here. solution in there get that down okay that is that's perfect Okay, that is all down. Just gonna run my hand along, make sure there's no moisture left behind and there's a little bit right, right there, but I've got that out. So that's good. Now I can work over here on the driver's side. Just gonna add some more slip solution to the behind the film. There we go. Now, what I want to do is I want to line up this top edge. That is good. all 
all that lined up along the top there. That is good. Now the pattern goes behind the headlight a bit, so you know you got to get that squeegee in there. By working from here, getting the middle down, this corner lined up, and then coming up here, this relief cut over here lines up perfectly. So all I'm gonna have to do is just add tack solution to it and lock it into place. So, there we go. Now, I'm going to get I'm going to get this edge over here lined up. And I'm going to work this line with the squeegee to make sure that that's locked into place and it's not going anywhere. Perfect. This is the hard part about getting all your moisture out is you gotta you have to push it up, up and out. But I find this to be the way that's always worked good for me. Got my tack solution in there. And I'm just gonna squeegee that down into place. Perfect. Okay. Now I've got this little bit of film over here. I'm just gonna work this edge with my squeegee at an angle, just like so. that down. Oh, got a little bit of moisture right there. Just hit that. Just hit that out. There we go. Everything's perfect now. Now, when we come over to this edge, I want to make sure that the film lines up perfectly along the edge over here. So, by I'm going to work this corner now first. Get that down. That's perfect. Now, I can get all this out of here like so. Now I'm going to come down over here, line up this bottom corner. Just like that. Squeegee it down. Perfect. Now it's going to take very little to get this corner, this corner, and this corner lined up because they basically are. So, like I mentioned, how everything just lines up, that lines up perfectly. So all I need to do is just squeegee everything into place. So, there we go. Perfect. Done. Now we have this lip up over here, which kind of wraps underneath the headlight 
Just gonna get my tack solution in there. And I'm just gonna squeegee that down into place. Just like so. bit of moisture right there. Push that out. Perfect. Now I can come over here and do the exact same thing. Here, get oh, it's got to go over a little bit. Get that down. There we go. Squeeze you all that down. Perfect. I'm gonna get this right here down. This corner. That's the big thing. You want to work this edge right over here. You want to make sure your film is lined up with the edge and then come up to this body line right here. And that's what I'm doing with my squeegee. I'm just worrying about this. Now I can go and squeegee everything in place right there to that edge. Now I do have this moisture over here that's popping up. Now I'm just going to get some tack solution in there like I just did. And I'm just going to squeegee it up. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to make sure that this lip over here, well it's down for the most part, just that one little area. Perfect. That is good. Now, come over here, get this corner in. So, there we go, get this lined up, there we go. Good. Now, I'm just gonna get some slip.
down. There we go. That's good. Now, same thing right here. There we go. Squeegee that all in. Okay, now just make sure all my moisture is out, which it is. Now the last thing I'm gonna do right here, pull this lip back, flush out all my slip solution, and Squeegee it out. Perfect. Okay, now, this video didn't take too terribly long, so I'm gonna do is go over post heating. I've done this in some of the videos, and some videos I haven't, but, I'm gonna do it in this video. So all I wanna do when I'm post heating is I got a rag and I basically just wanna make sure that there's no moisture left behind the edges of the film. We got a little bit right there. Instead of pushing that out with my finger, I'm gonna do it with squeegee. Got it. Now all I'm doing is just putting some pressure on my finger and going along the edge. And pushing out the moisture and then the heat's gonna activate the adhesive and lock the film into place. Now normally, or I shouldn't say normally, when you're doing this, this is always your last step of the installation because you don't wanna be driving down the road, all of a sudden, you know, you get this one little flap of film that lifts up. The next thing you know, you're getting a bunch of air underneath the film and you lose the film. I've heard of people losing bumpers on the highway because they avoided this step. Luckily, that's never been any of my customers, but um, this is definitely a step you don't want to, uh, you don't want to avoid this step. So, with the heat gun, you want to be moving quick because if you sit in one area too terribly long, you know, you could start to damage the adhesive or the, the film. go that is down and as you're doing this you start to you really really start to find your area is the moisture that you've left behind I have a little area right over here which I'm gonna pop with a diabetics needle but I'm gonna finish post heating the rest of the bumper before before we get there. So now what I mentioned earlier in the video about starting along this bottom edge, and I think I've touched on this in previous videos, is when uh, I've I've heard this firsthand from customers. You know when they've inquired about getting paint protection film from. You know, one of their buddies had their vehicle done by me and, uh, you know, when they went to go look at it, they had to look at the edges of the panel to see if there was film there. And they're always very happy with how, they're amazed with how precise the patterns are and just how much coverage there's given. So 
this is a big reason why I start on this bottom edge because you know people are gonna look there not very often obviously but you know when people do look there they're gonna see that hey that's that's consistent that edge so just a little little tip that I like to do I don't worry about post heating the middle of the uh, in the middle of the panel especially because you know I'm gonna have this vehicle for two days because we're doing a bunch of film on it and um, we're also gonna be ceramic coating it so as long as my edges are cured with the heat gun then uh, everything else is gonna bond nicely to the paint if that made sense I don't know been a long day okay that's good Hopefully this video has provided some value to you, whether you've got one of these vehicles yourself and you're looking to protect it yourself or whether you're a PPF installer, does this for a living. You know, hopefully this video has been of some value, even if you feel like I've done it completely wrong and should be doing it the other way around, you at least know how not to do it, I guess. But uh, I haven't run into any issues and um, yeah, so now the last thing I'm gonna do, grab my diabetics needle over here. So I get these at our local pharmacy and uh, I find my bubble, my moisture bubble that's left behind and it's right over here. What I like to do is kind of push it into a bubble so there's some pressure in there and then just very very gently poke that bubble and then just with my finger push all the adhesive out now that tiny little hole that's going to self heal once it gets into the sun got one more tiny one right there but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a heat gun right now and get it down actually I got one speck of contamination right in that corner thought that was a bubble so I've already post heated over here now what I'm doing is you know, I'm just lightly peeling the film back and I'm gonna pull I'm, I'm not pulling at a 90 degree I'm not pulling away I'm kind of pulling lifting the film up and pulling it towards me because I don't want to damage any of the adhesive underneath and um, I'm just gonna flush it out with some tack solution and I think I got it but I'm gonna just double check a bit of an awkward spot to have some contamination get left behind and that's completely gone so just squeegee that down again there we go Now, take the heat gun. Give it a bit of heat. Press down with my finger, just make sure that that's not gonna lift up. And it's not. Now I'm gonna come over to this area where I pop that bubble, give it a bit of heat. And that's going to close up any hole that the diabetics needle is going to leave. So this video is effectively over. I hope you guys found some value in it. Uh, if you did, leave it a like, comment down below your thoughts. Um, I think it's beautiful. Uh, I think it went well. I think it looks really good on this satin steel GM paint. It's a very, very good looking paint color. And um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to let me know. Stay tuned for the next video.